today our NBA power rankings. Yes, sir. We've got a huge shakeup here. Huge shakeup. New teams in. New number one. New top three. Not too much, but new number one. So here we go. This was the NBA power rankings coming into this week. Raptors at 10, Knicks at 9, Clippers at 8, Nuggets at 7, Lakers at 6, 76ers at 5, Blazers at 4, Suns at 3, Nets at 2, Jazz at 1. Alrighty, folks. We've got a lot of teams falling out. We've got what, four teams Four teams all falling out of the top 10. That means four new teams will be made. And as I said at the top of the show, this is kind of the second week up until, or the second to last NBA Power Rankings up until the All-Star break. So we got this day, uh, to this Friday, and then we got next Friday. And then the All-Star break officially begins on Thursday night. Thursday's the last official day of games. Then we have a five-day break. Um so we're going to, you know, we can kind of, with how much kind of mediocrity that there was this week, we felt like we could kind of play around with the top 10 a little bit. Not too much. I mean, we're not going to go crazy, but we have been impressed by some teams this week. So we're going to give them a shot this week to kind of prove themselves since we're taking a lot of teams out of the top 10. We're going to make the way for some of these teams that have been elevating their play these last like week or two and getting it together. We'll see if it's real or if it's fake, but we're going to give them this week before the All-Star break and get them in here in the top 10. So here we go. Let's start by uh, telling you which teams are out of the top 10, which teams we're kicking out, and why we're doing so. So the first team that we're kicking out is the Raptors. In the last week, they went 2-2. Two and two. They beat the Timberwolves and the 76ers, and then lost to the 76ers and the Heat. So they split against their series against the 76ers. Just once again, this Raptors team, we put them in number 10 because we want to take them slowly, and we're just seeing hit and miss and hit and miss and 50-50 play every single time. We want to believe in them, and then they take steps back, and then we start to believe in them again, and then they take steps back. So want to see this Raptors team consistently start beating some of the top-tier teams. Losing against the Heat was a little unfortunate. I know Goran Dragic was back in the starting lineup, I believe, for that game. But still, got to be a little bit more competitive. Got to start beating some of these more teams consistently. So we got to move the Raptors out of the top 10 just for going 2-2 two and two this week. Alrighty, the other team is the Clippers at number eight, moving them out of the top ten over them in the last week. They went two and two, beating the Jazz and the Wizards and losing against the Nets and the Grizzlies. I mean, folks, they're so well rested, losing against teams that they should be losing against the Grizzlies, first of all. Losing against the Nets, we can understand, but just not being competitive and not beating teams consistently and not going on some nice runs of like 4-0 and 3-0 and and maybe even 2-1, and maybe we can forgive. But this Clippers team of how well rested they are and still not beating the upper tier teams, the best teams in the league when they're playing every single night, it's like, what are we doing here? So we're moving the Clippers out. We're over them. We had them at number eight because once again, we had to take them slowly. There's nothing great by them. A little 50-50 when everybody's playing and, you know, of, uh, once again, just how well rested they are, it's a little disrespectful that they're not winning games to kind of do some of the other teams that are just night in, night out, overcoming injuries and, you know, elevating their lineups and, uh, you know, the stars not taking a night off. LeBron has never taken a night off for the last two seasons, folks, and he's trying his damn best. So we're taking the Clippers out. Um, the other team that we're taking out, unfortunately, is the Lakers there at number six. I mean, without Anthony Davis and Dennis Schroeder, I mean, this team is nothing great, folks. It's truly not even anything good. It's LeBron and everybody else not stepping up on a consistent basis. And so we got to take the Lakers out until Anthony Davis gets back, until they start stringing together some wins. Because in their la this last week, they had zero wins and three losses. Losses against the Heat, the Wizards, and the Jazz. I know those are kind of the top tier teams, the Jazz, the Heat, elevating their play a little bit, the Wizards elevating their play a little bit this last week, but still, they got to start winning some of these games, and without Anthony Davis in the starting lineup, and without Dennis Schroeder, this is an entirely different team that we cannot trust, or believe in, or bet on, or root for, so, Lakers out of the top 10 as well, and then this one's a big jump as well, the Blazers at number 4, they had a really, really tough week, 0-3 this week, losing against the Wizards, the Suns, and the Nuggets, you cannot be losing against all those teams folks so we do have to drop the Blazers out of the top 10 just because we want to make room for another team here 
that has kind of flourished this week or maybe the last two weeks. So Blazers, they can definitely get back in the top 10, but want to start seeing them play. They just had a real bad week, but uh, overall, they're still a good team, and we still do like the Blazers, and we just uh, we just took them with the points here tonight, plus 6.5. But, uh, yeah, got to start seeing them step it up a little bit more. Just had a little bit of a bad week. Don't think they'll continue it. But we got to move them out of the top 10 because we got more room for other teams. So here we go. Now that we told you why those teams, those four teams are out, let's start introducing some new teams here. And here we go at number 10. The new number 10 team is going to be the Chicago Bulls. Yes, sir. Zach Levine has been carrying his team single-handedly all season. But now we start to see, you know, Thaddeus Young step it off the bench consistently. Cole be wide start to get it done um, in the starting lineup as kind of the number two here consistently so I'm all about this Bulls team in the last week they've been where are they at they're uh, three and two in the last week they beat uh, the Kings, the Rockets, and the Timberwolves. Once again, not great wins, decent wins against those teams, but winning games nonetheless, and then losing against the 76ers and the Kings. So not a great loss against the Kings, but what this team is doing and how they've kind of been bouncing back from a very, very slow start, that kind of first third of the season, they're really starting to step it up, and we're going to give them a chance here. At number 10, what can you do for us this week heading into the All-Star break? Can they impress us? Are they going to start taking time off? Because this is a huge week, you know, with, you know, All-Star break coming up. Our team's going to start mallying mally, mally, it in this week, taking that kind of early vacation. Because we'll move you out of the top 10 for that. We've got no, we got no patience for that here in the top 10, honestly. So, Bulls, this is their week. Make your break week for the Bulls. And we'll start them at number 10 because of that. Alrighty, new number nine team. Once again, kind of once again taking it slow, giving them an opportunity, giving them a chance here. At number nine is going to be the Washington Wizards. I mean, folks, folks, Bradley Beal starting to step it up. Russell Westbrook not turning the ball over too much, but having triple double still getting involved. We see, you know, their bench of David Burton's, Rui Hachimura getting elevated to the starting lineup and doing well. David Burton's being kind of that third clutch player if they need that. So what like the Bulls. Everybody is starting to kind of get it done together, starting to step it up together for this Wizards team. And in the last week, they went 3-1, uh, and one, beating the Blazers, the Lakers, and the Nuggets. All really solid win, even though the Lakers, they didn't have Anthony Davis. But the Wizards, I mean, it's not like they're a great team themselves. So, great win there. They did lose against the Clippers kind of decently. I think like a 16-point loss. That was on a back-to-back -back with the Lakers, though. So, we're going to give them an opportunity here. As we said, kind of like the Bulls, let's see what they do this week. I definitely, they definitely cannot send it in uh, kind of phone it in mail it in this last week and they do kind of have some players that may do that Bradley Beal who's kind of expressed he doesn't want to be here anymore Russell Westbrook who's you know I don't think he'll phone it in because he never phones in at any game but still if Bradley Beal starts to phone it in they've got nobody else to kind of replace him in any department scoring defense rebounding assisting they are not that deep themselves but they've been having to pass Good, probably past you know, two weeks here. Definitely a good past week here. So we're going to give them a chance here at number 10. Let's see what you got. Let's get consistent here. And let's start beating some of these better teams consistently like they were kind of doing this week. So we honor the Wizards with their great performance this week at number 9. Alrighty, new number eight team and new number team in the top ten here. Here it is, the Heat. Yes, sir. They're back, baby. The Heat are back in the last week. They're three and zero, oh, baby. No losses over here. They're like losses. Come on, we got Jimmy Butler back. We got Goran Dragic back. That's all we need. We don't take no L's when those two are in our kind of rotation here. So here we go. Heat beating the Lakers, the Thunder, and the Raptors. Solid wins there all around. I think uh, that Lakers game that was the first game that Anthony Davis didn't play, and it was like. A two-point win for the Heat, but still closing out the game, winning the game, we'll give it to them. So very well done to the Heat. As long as they got Jimmy Butler and Goran Dragic, that's really all they need, and that's what we've been saying kind of all season long. We are not going to kind of sell the Heat because, you know, Goran Dragic and Jimmy Butler were out for weeks. I mean, Jimmy Butler was out for like two weeks, and then they started to win games when he got in the starting lineup, but then Goran Dragic is still out, but now that he's in back in the starting lineup, they're fine. Now it's just they need just one other person to step up and not two. So Kendrick Nunn usually steps up. Tyler Hero steps up every now and then. So they've got the heat, the pieces. They got the scores. They got the bench, the bench, the depth, the big. They're kind of returning to their form in the bubble now that everybody's slowly starting to get healthy. Now this is a huge week for the Heat. Want to see them kind of thrive and kind of go into the All Star break on a nice win streak. So Heat at number eight, solid week. Everybody's back healthy, and they're at number eight because of that. 
All righty, new number seven team. This team moving up a little bit is the New York Knicks. Solid week here. We see, um, uh, what do we see? Uh, we see that uh, uh, Derrick Rose just got into the starting lineup last night for last night's game. So very well done. He kind of uh, thrived there. So like seeing that. But in the last week, the Knicks have went 2-1. and one. They beat the Timberwolves and the Kings. Once again, not great wins, but solid wins for this Knicks team who are kind of rising up a little bit. And they do did lose against the Warriors. Not the greatest, but we did see kind of great play from the bench all week. We saw great stuff from the starters, RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. And like we said, Derrick Rose elevated to that starting lineup position. He really made it work. And then the bench really got even better. So uh, we'll see if this kind of starting lineup sticks. Once again, we're giving this Knicks team a shot here, a chance here. Let's end out this kind of first half of the season on a high note, and we'll take it from there next Friday uh, with the power rankings. But this Knicks team, they are kind of rising up. Like I said, this the Bulls, Wizards, Heat, and Knicks, they've all had really kind of a bad third of the season. This second third that we're kind of currently in right now, they've really starting to been stepping it up here these last two weeks. So we're going to give all these teams a chance. They've got some bright moments. They've got some promise there. They've, they've been all rising up. So we're going to respect some of this kind of talent here that has been rising up and not floundering like, you know, the Clippers and the Raptors and the Lakers, you know, who are now floundering currently. So we're elevating teams at what have you done for us lately? And we feel confident with the Bulls, Wizards, Heat, and Knicks at the 10 through 7 here. All right, number six team is going to be the Nuggets. Um, you know, they've been at number seven forever now. We have to move them up to number six just to kind of, you know, uh, of what everybody else has been doing. But uh, the Nuggets, once again, nothing great this season. Uh, nothing great this week. I'm talking about mediocrity. I mean, everybody really in the top ten this week was going like two of two. Nothing fantastic. So that's why we had some uh, spots up here available. That's why we had, uh, you know, kind of move st uh, a lot of stuff around. But Nuggets at number six. The last week they went two and two, beating the Cavs and the Blazers. Decent wins there. Blazers is a better win over the Cavs, but then you lose to the Heat and the Wizards. It's just like mm, not great there. So, um, yeah. So we moved the Nuggets up a little bit, a little bit. Really shouldn't have lost last night, as we saw. Probably should have tied it. Who knows what would have happened in overtime? But the Wizards being competitive, that was the main takeaway of that game. So we will move the Nuggets up a little bit. Um, just one spot. Not really of what. They did on their own, just kind of what everybody else did around them. Nobody else really stepped up as well. So we'll have the Nuggets at six. Uh, Jamal Murray and Jokic can show out any night they want. Michael Porter Jr. is kind of getting back into the momentum and the rhythm of this starting lineup now. Uh, but the Nuggets, they've got a nice big three. They've got decent depth off the bench. They have been missing Paul Millsap these last couple of games, which has really definitely hindered them. Um, but uh, Nuggets at number six, they've still got a decent squad here. We'll see how they close out this kind of last week. Alrighty, new number five team, and this is our last new addition here in the top ten, and we got to give it to the Bucks here. Huge jump here, weren't in the top ten coming into this week, but we got to move them all the way up here to number five because in the last week they went four and zero, beating the Thunder, the Kings, the Timberwolves, and the Pelicans. And the Thunder, the Kings, and the Timberwolves, not really great wins there, but like we said, we don't like to penalize teams for you know winning games that they should be winning. In that Pelicans game, I mean, I love that lineup. So that's you know kind of you know a preview of. What's to come and what's to consistently be the starting lineup of this Bucks team? I think I'm definitely about it. Uh, Chris Middleton at the two, Dante DiVincenzo at the one, Bobby Portis at the three. I think I'm all about that starting lineup. So Bucks at five, great kind of closeout win against the Pelicans, who have been kind of streaking a little bit here this last week, a tad. Uh, definitely, you know, like we said, you know, the Pelicans winning kind of uh, decently throughout that entire game, having leads kind of throughout the entire game, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Well done by the Bucks. Great performance by everybody in the starting lineup, and that's what we want to see consistently from this Bucks team. Everybody in that starting lineup doing good, not just you know Chris Middleton and Giannis, or not just Giannis and uh, Brooke Lopez. It's everybody in that starting lineup. Great performance by everybody last night. Great lineup. I loved that freaking lineup. So we'll see if they stick with it. But Bucks at five because of all those reasons in a 4-0 week. The only team that went undefeated besides another team that we will be talking about uh, in the top four here. Thank you.
Alrighty, new number four teams as we took the Blazers out of the top four, out of that number four spot, and we moved the 76ers up to number four. Four this week so nice little move up from five to four this week for the 76ers this week they went three and one being the Bulls the Raptors and the Mavs all solid competition the Bulls are rising the Raptors are still pretty decent and the Mavs I mean they still got Doncic so good wins there they did lose against the Raptors so split against the Raptors but won their second meeting which is definitely better than losing your second meeting so you know you made your adjustments you got either healthier or you got maybe a better bench player that didn't play that game or something like that but 76ers win that second meeting against the Raptors still still unstoppable Joel Embiid is still unstoppable still can't beat him Tobias Harris is still getting it done we've seen um Danny Green really kind of step it up this last week kind of consistent shooting performances by him and good defense as well Seth Curry has had some pretty good games and uh, so the 76ers team just really everybody getting it done here and uh so we moved them up because of that to number four yeah Alrighty, Suns staying at number three. Yeah, staying at number three here for the Suns. Can't really move them up too much. They did go three and one in their last week, so very well done. They beat the Pelicans, Grizzlies, and the Blazers. Pelicans and Grizzlies both rising. Blazers a little falling a little bit just this week alone. And then they did lose to the Hornets, unfortunately. A little bit of a big loss there. That's kind of why we have to keep them at number three, unfortunately. But, I mean, they're making it work. Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton getting it done consistently. So we keep the Suns at three. Solid squad here. All getting it done night in, night out. And uh, they're definitely one of the best teams. They can go and challenge any team if they go and face, you know, the Nets, the Jazz, the 76ers. I feel like they can go and beat that team any given night. I give them a 50-50 chance, which is exactly where you want to be. You want to have at least that 50% chance. There's two outcomes in a game, win or lose. So if you're that 50-50, you're pretty good. Whereas, you know... The uh, the Pistons, I give them a pro probably maybe a 10% chance of winning it on a nightly basis. So, Suns at number three. They're still good. Just kind of had a little bit of a hiccup this week, losing to the Hornets, but it was a close loss. So, you know, we'll give them it. All righty, number one and two, folks. These are the one and two teams. Now, do we flip the order? Nets at two, Jazz at one. We flip the order. Jazz at number two. Nets at number one. I mean, Nets winning without Kevin Durant, folks. I mean, folks, come on, come on. You take off one of your bigs on your team. You know, LeBron James with the Lakers, they can't get a win. Uh, Jimmy Butler without the Heat, they can't get a win. Who else do we get? Uh, Joel Embiid with the 76ers, tough to get a win. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, tough to get a win without the Jazz. But without Kevin Durant, this Nets team is like, okay. Okay, we got Bruce Brown. We got Joe Harris. It don't matter. They're just kind of luxury. Kevin Durant's a luxury to us. Could you imagine saying Kevin Durant's a luxury to us? Well, we kind of can because he was with the Warriors. Get that zing in there. Uh, but yeah, Jazz at number two. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go over through this uh, quickly. In the last week, they beat the Hornets and the Lakers. Lost to the Clippers. Unfortunately, that Clippers lost. Not the greatest. Obviously, we know the Lakers. I mean, they blew out the Lakers. Fine, but you know, they only had LeBron James. So, losing against the Clippers a little not great there by the Jazz but I mean they're 9 one in their last 10 just that hiccup against the Clippers and we'll give you one out of every 10 games we'll give you a loss and you can have your pick of who you lose against we've got no problem with that uh, so the Jazz at number two, they're still deep. They've got, you know, the unstoppable freaking pick and roll between uh, Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert and still got Jordan Clarkson off the bench. So uh, number two for the Jazz. And then the Nats, I mean, they went undefeated this week. They're on an eight-game winning streak, eight and two in their last ten, beating the Clippers, the Kings, and the Magic. Now, you know, the Kings and the Magic, not great wins, but they were blowing them out, and they beat the Clippers um, underdog team going into them. We took that game. They were getting points like six and a half, and we took it, and they went outright. So uh, this Nets. Next team, James Harden, Kyrie Irving getting it done, and then the supporting cast, you know, down to Jordan at the five, Joe Harris at the four, getting it all done. Bruce Brown, we just saw last night, get it done as well. So this Nets team, they're decently deep. No Kevin Durant um, still, and they're still winning games. And because of that, of how well James Harden is just kind of facilitating the floor, how well him and Kyrie Irving are both scoring the ball together, the fact that freaking Joe Harris can still get 15 more, 15 plus points while, you know, Kevin Durant, or while Kyrie Irving goes for third. While James Harden goes for 30 and Joe Harris can still find efficient 15 points, it's absolutely great. So, Nets at number one. They're deep. They don't even have Kevin Durant, folks. 
Alrighty, so the new number or so the new power rankings going into this week will be the Bulls at ten, the Wizards at nine, the Heat at eight, the Knicks at seven, the Nuggets at six, the Bucks at five, the 76ers at four, the Suns at three, the Jazz at two, the Nets at one. Alrighty, now let's go 